future ready organizations are made up of change agents. Being predictive, learning new things, being willing to experiment with innovations, even innovations that are not complete yet. This is a critical part of your business, critical part of everybody in your organization. So, you know, one of the takeaways for you to come back from, I think, in terms of this conference is to say, you know, how do we define being future ready in our organization? How future ready are we to embrace innovations? What does that look like? And of course, the, the mismatch is between how future ready do you think the customer base is, how hungry or how do you think interested they are in being future ready, being preparing for it, adapting for these future challenges, and what innovative tools are they going to look for that you could be an enabler or provider of? I think that's a critical part of this. So banks must become fast and better and deeper at future readiness. And I would take that away and put that up on the whiteboard with your team and your organization and say, what does that mean for us? Well, how could we get more future ready? How do we define that in terms of innovation? And how do we learn and adapt and grow? And more importantly, who do we partner with to be able to help us be a future ready organization so that we can be really an enabler of those customers we have and customers we don't have? Uh, I'm particularly interested in the customers we don't have. But if you want to look for that you know, takeaway from the conference in terms of being a competitive differentiator for, for your bank, your institution, try to answer those questions. Certainly, you've got a good partner here that's hosted this to help you think about that. Well, let me move on. This is the early stage of the global innovation economy. I mean, just in terms of years, you're only talking about a handful of decades here that the computer was invented. The web, even less than that. Mobile was not a force that is, it is not even three to four years ago. Now we're talking about all kinds of new things, analytics, next generation cloud, but I want you to understand that this is all part of developing a culture that embraces innovation, but also looks at the, what I call the innovation ROI, the innovation return on investment. Increasingly, that investment, there's a qualitative part of that, which is just competitiveness, customer service, being able to produce the right kind of products, and services that you know, customers are going to need. But the other part of that is being able to define your future of your organization, your return on investment. So that's the second takeaway. Other than asking your team back at home base, how do we define what it is to be future ready? How do we define what our innovation ROI is? Because not every innovation should be embraced, unless you can answer that question. What do we anticipate that ROI is? How are we going to quantify that? because we're living in an era of radical innovation. So there are, there are 10 strategic innovation trends I want to bring to your attention, and this is where we are and kind of where we're going to move forward, all right? And I'll break some of these down, not all of them, but I'll give you a sense kind of the, of the big 10. First is media convergence. Certainly what's on your desktop, you know, now is everything is, is mobile. You're going to see a convergence of the television, the internet, mobile devices, and increasingly when these things collide with the internet of things, where everything has an IP address, it's a very different world. And it's happening very quickly, much quicker than ever before. Also, with this convergence of media, and very shortly you'll see interactive media, where you can interact with a TV, interact with a mobile device, interact with your car, interact certainly with different kinds of mobile devices that are embedded. You're going to see Google Glasses come out this year. And there'll be also three or four other Google-like glasses that will give people direct interface, direct connectivity. And we'll have a new kind of blended and augmented reality. And the critical part of all that is whether you're watching your TV or interacting with your mobile device or you're walking around San Francisco or Milwaukee or Chicago is what? Buying, selling, and extracting meaning from your environment. So everything will have a geo-intelligence attached to it. Certainly what's next from a mobile, you're, right now there's the better part of six billion mobile devices on the planet, of which three quarters of them are really what? They're portals for doing what? Banking. They're portals for doing purchasing. They're portals for transactions. And that's going to increase. The mobile platform, the mobile enablement. Every now and then, I think one out of 100 websites that I get an email about and I want to check out I'm interested in are not mobile ready. How many banks are mobile ready? Show of hands, how many banks are mobile ready in the audience? Sure. This is our survey, look around the room. 
This is our survey. So not enough, not enough. Okay, so we got work to do. Good, that's work to do. You're gonna hear a lot more about cloud. I'll break that down for you. What's on your desktop, what's available. Moving into a secure cloud platform. Next presentation, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But inevitably, that is the, the, the three big things you're gonna hear about. Big data, cloud computing, certainly, and analytics are gonna redefine banking. Let me say that again. What's gonna redefine banking, your bank, your industry, in your lifetime, no, not after you retire, is analytics, big data, cloud computing. Why? It's a fundamental reset in creating a relationship between a customer and an organization and employees. Notice, I didn't say anything about technology. No, it doesn't have to do with that. It has to do with the service business and the ability of that service institution to provide services in a fundamentally new way, but more importantly, to extract meaning and understand who the customer is, what they want, where they want it, when they want it, better to do what? To predict and anticipate. You're actually kind of in a similar business as I am. Why? You're all futurists trying to do what? Predict what your customer is going to need, when they're going to need it, where they're going to need it, and then provide it for them. All right? You're in the prediction business. And cloud, analytics, certainly you'll hear a lot more about this, mobile, even social, are enablers for you to be able to provide better customer service, also secure service. So geo-intelligence, geolocation, every device will have an IP address. Certainly predictive analytics, the ability to predict, as I indicated, are critically important. I mentioned Sojo. Uh, let me just say something about digital transactions. So are we finally at the point where we can say that you know, moving paper, you think about just the revolution of moving bits versus moving paper, right? How much paper do you move in your organization as opposed to bits? Where do you think the customer is? The customer wants to move more bits than institutions want to move. Institutions want to move more paper. They're not moving fast enough. The customer is moving much faster in terms of the acceleration of an architecture of moving bits. Digital delivery, digital signature, digital this, digital that. My bank, and I deal with three of the largest banks in the United States, very difficult to get them to embrace this for some of my businesses. Very difficult, very difficult. That is gonna change dramatically. The other part, the fundamental part of this is digital value, digital identity. Identity management value mashed up with mobile. This is a critical part of your future, and we'll talk a little bit more about where that's going. We talked about big data. Let me just say one thing about big data. It's critically important. Big data is all about extracting meaning from information. Most of it you already have. We're not talking about dumping a lot more data on you. We're talking about making sense of actionable value out of information so that you can do what? Understand the life cycle of your customer, understand their needs. Again, anticipate and predict better their needs. Critically important, right? But more importantly, it's to be able to manage your data repositories and assets. Looking at, at data as an asset that could be leveraged and monetized for competitive advantage, but also, most importantly, if you're doing this right, delivering and enabling more value for me, your customer, helping me run my business better, helping me identify new opportunities to manage my credit, helping me better understand my financial resources and asset opportunities that I don't see right now that you can enable me to see. And being proactive about that with customers you don't have that you want and customers you do have, expanding those product and service offerings to enable and empower them more. So we'll talk a little bit more. But these are the top ones that'll change the future. There's also risk factors. So let me just say, you know, the, 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 let me start at the bottom of the biggest risk factor, if you will, right? And that's security. So all this cool stuff that you're going to hear about, that you're dealing with, that you're looking at, particularly in the innovation space, mobile, social, cloud, analytics, great. One, if you're not doing that behind a secure cloud platform, then you're missing the big point. This is the big point. You got to understand that first. Security uptrend, and this is kind of the dark side of every innovation, but just the business in general. As more stuff gets connected, this is one of Canton's laws, right? Me. As more stuff gets connected, more stuff both becomes a productivity, 
avalanche of opportunity, as well as becomes what? A vulnerable risk factor that increasingly provides a drag on or increases more risk for you and your organization. Security is a critical part of getting all this right. You can go and buy these services from lots of different folks. Blue Dolphin will be glad to work with you on your mobile strategy, okay? And that's great. But having an integrated set of solutions behind a secure platform and an institution to be able to back that up for you and secure that for you is more important than the actual balkanization of these things as one-offs. And that's a battle you're going to have to face internally with your own IT group. More importantly, you want to think about the implications in a world where continually uh, their insecurity of financial institutions becomes too many headlines that we cannot afford. Um, customer expectation outpaces banks' delivery. Increasingly, this is just the new normal. You're going to have to deal with this. Manage that expectation, but also make sure your own acceleration vectors in terms of embracing new innovation are there and they're invested, the investments that make sense. Embracing the CE, the connected enterprise. Connected enterprise moves more bits than paper, but more fundamentally, rethinks the actual workflow, rethinks what are we doing in our institution? What are we doing in our bank? Who is doing what? Are we, do we have the same roles we had three years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Or do we need to rethink the actual work deliverables and rethink them in terms of moving them from work processes that are based on some of the very technologies that we're looking to market, social, mobile, to the customers? So the streamlining and productivity enhancement and the rethinking of workflow in financial organizations, and I know because I'm a partner in a financial organization, we manage a billion uh, five, I can tell you, this is a fundamental conversation. If you're not every three to six months looking at transforming the workflow and asking hard questions about what should we be doing to be more adaptive and customer-centric and thinking about workflow differently and given these enabling technologies, you're missing another part of this. This conversation about innovation is not just about stuff like iPads or mobile phones. No, it's about new mobile strategies, better ways to share information, better ways to get work done, smarter, more efficient ways to reduce redundancy, not protect silos, but to create more integrated, smart architectures that will drive entrepreneurial opportunity where every part of the organization really is a profit center. Low future readiness certainly is a risk factor. We talked about that. And then finally, choosing the right partner for whatever next innovation or innovation suite of products that you want to develop. So just so you know, I'm going to take a big jump up and then come straight down. This is just you know, the big picture. When we talk about what's next for innovation, there really are, if you will, uh, these are the five key technologies that are transforming only the next 100 years. And I'm not going to go into all these. I'm going to focus more on the, what's relevant to you. But I just want you to know you're, this is part of a revolution in innovation that will change us for the next 100 years. After that, I, I can't predict. Only the next 100 years. Okay? So don't email me after that. I don't want to get emails. You know. So it, you know, it's nanotechnology, manipulation of matter at the atomic level, certainly life sciences, biotechnology, neurotechnology, quantum technology, and information technology, certainly which includes mobile, social, and computing. You're going to see very fast-moving technologies that are going to be going out to try to solve very large problems, such as global communications, trying to bring together cultures and trade and globalization. You're going to see, for, for instance, the fastest-moving uh, trend really is life and health enhancement. The health enhancement marketplace for personalized medicine is moving very quickly. In fact, we talk about Moore's Law and computing, computing power doubling every really year. In the area of DNA sequencing, that's doubling every six months. Just, you, just so you understand that some of these innovations that are really driving everything that we're doing, certainly your customer base, are happening very, very quickly. So these innovations are going to make for a much, uh, let's say, people are going to be living longer, too. Many new kinds of industries are going to be developed in and around these technologies, particularly life sciences. And you're going to have a very different kind of marketplace. But ultimately, what this means is, is that global knowledge, that a global knowledge tsunami of new information and new businesses and new markets is going to be very good for financial services because no matter what your business is, 
you're going to need some kind of financing, you're going to need some credit, you're going to need banking to be able to facilitate this. But being in sync with these innovation industries is very critically important. I kind of refer to this as the innovation nation. This is the key driver of GDP in the United States and around the world, particularly in the United States. Over one third of real GDP is being driven by innovation industries. And 90% of all products will be innovation enhanced by 2020. So, you know, innovation is not, I would say it's probably the fastest driver of business development. And increasingly, when we look at the United States, 90% um, of real growth in the economy is small to medium sized business, as you know, in terms of your customer base changing. Um, the predominance of new companies that are started, uh, the majority of them, are actually started by women entrepreneurs. And increasingly, this innovation economy is being changed and molded by the demographics of that marketplace as well. Small to medium size, certainly a, a large growth of women, as I indicated. And as we know, there are more women demographically working in the workforce and who graduate college than men in the United States. But innovation drives competitive advantage. Just to give you a perspective, by 2020, six billion plus will be totally online. That number's probably low because there will be multiple ways for people to get access to the internet. Now, what's next for the internet? Whether it's on your mobile device or your pad or brought to you in your car, and that's one, always on, not turned off, not like we need to turn it on or turn it off, always connected, very critically important and you want them connected to you and your business and your service offerings, and always aware. The awareness of the internet, wherever the internet will be, whether it's tied to your car, tied to transaction processing for your mobile, whether it's your TV, I want you to understand this pervasive world of connectivity and this convergence is just the beginning. This is the early stage of the innovation economy. So when we talk about living in a blended reality, probably the ultimate example of this is really you're going to see Google Glasses. You know, you put on Google Glasses, the web is every place, and you're able to then see information differently, whether you're driving or you're doing information, you're creating the next drug, whatever it may be. It's not just going to be on a particular surface. It's a mobile cultural shift. So digital connectivity is the next global business revolution. And you want to be part of that and in sync with that. Because ultimately, you're talking about not just a business revolution that's driven by innovation, but it's going to create entirely new businesses and opportunities for you. So be your new bank. It's not just your mobile device. It may be in the car. It may be a wearable like Google. Meet your future customer. What are you doing for my future customer today? The customer is changing. The marketplace is changing. It's being driven by innovations. You want to be on top of that. So enterprise 2.0, the next evolution of business, is going to be driven a lot by social. Not just mobile, but social analytics, trying to understand where people are. And increasingly, if you've noticed, in the past 24 months, the social dimension, Facebook, Twitter, the web, all of a sudden it's changed dynamically. Just to give you an idea, do you think about Google as your competition? Or Facebook as your competition? You should. I would. They're changing their algorithms. That's their computer programming on the products that they offer. So their product offerings on the internet, there's not just their search engine, but they're a way to analyze me and you, their ability to adapt dynamically to my personalized interests and needs is changing 20 times an hour that's how fast their algorithms move to be able to adapt. Does your organization have that degree of agility? I know mine doesn't. Should it? Well, you should at least understand that there's an entirely new competitive landscape of folks that are using algorithms to be able to look at social marketing, look at social analytics, look at social media, look at networks differently. And the looking at them differently make, make a critical change for how you do your business. Because the world is getting, quite frankly, enmeshed with the YouTube, Google, Flickr, Pandora, BitTorrent. And increasingly, how we market, I mean, marketing is, traditional marketing is dead. 
Are we ready for the new era of marketing, which is based on real-time knowledge across massive social networks? Because it's going to affect how we think about cloud services. So having a smart cloud future that's based on security is going to be critically important. Mobile knowledge management is another part of this. Again, I want to have access to all my information all the time, anywhere, to my mobile device. And you're going to see the dynamics of geo-intelligence will work for you. Not, I, I want to not just have to pull that out of some place. I want the network to know where I am, and it will. Geo-intelligence, geolocation, GPS-enabled devices, GPS-enabled objects, GPS-enabled information is going to transform the way we interact and communicate. And it will lead to a new generation of pervasive networks. These networks will be aware of us. So, you know, let me just say in summary, look, my message is there's very fast innovation occurring. This era of fast change, you want to have the right partner to be able to help you navigate through these. Lastly, the innovations of mobile social analytics and cloud, which are predominantly important in terms of competitive differentiation, I think, for most organizations, certainly financial services, is really about enabling and empowering me, your customer, to do more, smarter, and to be able to create more, a better use of my capital, better use of my resources, and even help me grow and create a more sustainable business. I think the challenges in front of you are, how do you explore new stuff fast, how do you embrace new stuff fast? And understand that this is the early stages of the innovation economy. You're going to hear a lot more about augmented reality and new digital monetary platforms in the future. You're going to hear a lot more about what we can do on the other side of smart analytics. But I want to let you know it's an exciting run. I'm glad you're here, and it's a pleasure to kind of give you an overview of what's coming next. Thank you. <laughs>